Hello, my little mathematicians. Today, we're going to explore comparing and ordering integers. So if you take a look at um, textbook page 13, it starts off with this explore activity where it gives you this list of teams. Okay, And it says the Westfield Soccer League ranks its teams using a number called the win-loss combined record. A team with more wins than losses will have a positive combined record. A team with fewer wins than losses will have a negative combined record. The table shows the total win-loss combined record for each team at the end of the season. Okay, so here are the different teams. They first want you to graph the win-loss combined record for each team on the number line. So zero would be graphed right here, and that's A, representing the Sharks. 4, I'm going to draw a dot there, and B for Jaguars, negative 4, C for Badgers, negative 6, a D for Tigers, um, positive 2, E for Cougars, negative 2, an F for Hawks, and finally a positive 6 representing G for the Wolves team. All right, now they want to know which team had the best record in the league. And how do you know? Well, the best record means that they had more wins than losses, right? And they said that that would be represented by a positive number. So where's the biggest positive you see? Six. And that's representing G, the Wolves. So the Wolves, or G, um, had the best because they won the most games. And um, I could also say, like, you know, how do you know based upon the graph if they asked you that? Um, furthest right means the greatest number, right? Okay. Then for our next one, it says, which team had the worst record? How do you know? Well, the worst record would mean they lost the most. They'd have, um, it would be in the negative. So the furthest negative is negative six, which is D for Tigers. So the Tigers, D, had the worst record because they lost the most games. And I knew that quickly by looking because they were the furthest left. Okay, um, my next question they asked me was explain what the data tells you about the win-loss records of the teams in the league. So what are some things that you notice? Okay, go ahead and pause the video, jot some stuff down. Okay, now you unpause it and you're back with us. And here's some things that I noticed. See if you got any of the same. Um, I noticed that the Badgers, Tigers, and Hawks all lost more games than they won. That's why they're in the negatives. Okay, um, the Jaguars, Cougars, and Wolves all won more games than they lost. That's why they have a positive win-loss record. Um, and then the Sharks had an equal number of wins and losses, and that's why they're at zero. So that's um, kind of why they graphed this the way it did, and that's what this specific data is telling us, okay? Um, and then I'm sure you had some great insights to this as well. Let's go ahead and turn the page and try some more. And if I ever go too fast, remember you can pause, stop, rewind, fast forward, um, at any point in time if you need to catch up or if you want to work ahead and then come back and join us. All right, if we turn the page to the next one, this is talking about um, Fred recorded the following golf scores during his first week at a golf academy. Negative numbers represent scores below par, a standard score, um, and in golf, a lower score beats a higher score. So first, graph Fred's scores on the number line and then list the numbers in order from least to greatest. So I'm going to draw a dot at 4, 1 at negative 2, 1 at positive 3, 1 at negative 5, 1 at negative 1, 1 at 0, and 1 at negative 3. Okay, read from left to right to list the scores in order from least to greatest. So notice how the first one is negative 5, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0 and then three, and then four. And that's an order from least to greatest. This example was already done for you. I want you to try it yourself for this one. My only hint to you is always pay attention to these. 
um, if they go least to greatest, but every once in a while they might go greatest to least. My helpful hint is if it says least, I underline it once and then greatest, I underline twice. So it's kind of a visual for me to go small to big or big to small, depending upon what they're asking for. Okay, see if you can graph these and then list them from small to big. All right, if you paused it and you're back with us, um, so you drew dot at negative five, four, zero, negative three, negative six, and positive two. And then if you list them from least to greatest, that's negative six, negative five, negative three, zero, two, and four. Okay. And then our next one, you drew a dot at nine, negative one, negative six, two, negative 10, zero, five, and eight. Okay, again, always double check the directions and make sure they didn't switch it on you. And they now I want big to small, but it's in the same set of directions. They still want small to big. So if you start furthest from the left, because that's the smallest number, negative 10, then negative six, then negative one, zero, two, five, eight, and finally nine. All right, if you got those right, congratulations. And yes, some of the questions could be that simple on your quiz. Don't you hope they're all like that? All right, let's keep going and try some more, okay? Now we said that we were gonna like put things in order, but we also said we we're gonna compare in this particular section. Let's draw some attention right here. If you have a highlighter, I would highlight that word inequality. If they say use an inequality sign, that's what you're gonna use to compare numbers, okay? If something's greater than something else, you'd use the greater than symbol. If something's less than something else, you'd use the less than symbol. Um, I remember less than kind of looks like a slanted L, right? It doesn't look like it's just rotated. Um, you always want the bigger thing facing in the great big open end. So the alligator mouth or great big open end is facing the bigger number. And then the little tiny dot end right there is facing the smaller item. Okay, let's give some of these a shot. Um, right here, it says, write two inequalities to compare negative six and seven. So what's bigger, negative six or seven? Seven is obviously bigger because it's a positive number. So you want the great big open end facing it, right? And the little tiny dot end is facing this. So if you read it, it says negative six is less than seven. And they said, write two inequalities. So you're like, how do you write another one? Well, this time write seven before the negative six. And now that would have your inequality facing the other way. It's still saying seven is greater than negative six. Negative six is less than seven. Read it this way, seven is greater than negative six. They're both saying the same thing. I just wrote it two different ways. So if I were to do this one, negative, four, negative nine and negative four, well, what's bigger, negative nine or negative four? What do you think? Actually, negative nine is not bigger. Negative four is bigger. Why? Because it's further to the right on a number line. It's closer to being zero. It's closer to being positive. You'd rather owe $4 than owe somebody $9, right? So negative nine is less than negative four. And if you wanted to write it a different way, this time I'd put the negative four first and now flip the inequality. There you go. I wrote it two different ways. Why don't you guys go ahead and try the your turn section? Okay, put the proper inequality sign in these bubbles and then write two inequalities representing these. Ready, set, go. Okay, you hopefully did that, and now you are back with us, okay? Uh, if not, pause it and then unpause it. All right, I have negative 10 and negative two. Which is furthest to the right? Negative two is, so negative two is greater, or you'd rather owe $2 than owe somebody $10, right? So that was the correct inequality for that one. My next one, you're comparing negative six and positive six. What's bigger? Well, obviously a positive number is greater than a negative number. Okay, so hopefully you have that inequality sign for that one. My next one is comparing negative seven and negative eight. Okay, this one's a little bit trickier. What'd you put? Hopefully you saw that I'd rather owe $7 than owe $8. So negative seven is actually greater than negative eight. 
Okay, it's further to the right. It's closer to being zero and closer to being positive. Those were the inequality signs you should have put in there. Now, if they asked you to write two different inequalities representing these scenarios right here, negative two and negative 18, which sign did you put between them? Well, negative two is greater, okay? And then to write it the other way, you would have put negative 18 first this time and negative two second, but the greater than sign is still facing the negative two, the great big alligator mouth, the great big open end. Okay, negative 18 is less than negative two, and negative two is greater than negative 18. Okay, finally, last one. You're comparing 39 and negative 39. Well, what is bigger, a positive or a negative? Obviously, a positive is greater than a negative. So I should have the great big open end facing the positive number. Okay, to write it another way, this time I'd put the negative 39 first, and then I would flip the inequality sign because negative 39 is less than 39. If you got those right, congratulations. Um, you've now mastered comparing and ordering integers.